is yesterday when we started our substitution, we had both sides equaled y or both sides equaled x. And then we just set them equal and we went about our business. And we also got introduced to a couple of special cases if all of our variables disappear. So now today we're going to add one piece to that. So we'll move down a little bit further on that second page here. And what we're going to run into today is that only one equation has y equals. So what's going to be a little different now is we're not going to set them equal at the start. We're going to take the one that's y equals, or it might be x equals sometimes. We probably should write that in here. It might be x equals 2, and replace that in the second equation. You're like, okay, what does that mean? I'm going to find my x, my, here's my y equals. I like to use a box. I'm going to take a box, and I'm going to replace it. I'm going to substitute it in where that y is at. So the y is going to get pulled out. And this 4x minus 6 is going to get plugged in. So here's what that's going to look like. So step one, I'm going to start copying the second expression until I get to y. And then I'm going to replace it with 4x minus 6. Copied the second equation. We just got rid of the y and replaced it with that box that I had up above there. You're like, okay, why did we do that? Because now, instead of having two variables, I only have one variable, x. So once we do that, we're going to do what we do. We're going to Algebra 1 this, and we're going to distribute. We're going to multiply here. So 6 times 4 is 24, 6 times negative 6 is negative 36. And I'm going to start to work through this. Now here's one other thing that's different from yesterday. Yesterday we had x's on both sides. We had to do opposites to get them together. But today it's different. Today the x's are on the same side, so we can just combine them. Yeah. Once we get through a few things there, yes, yes, we absolutely can get you there. So negative 1 plus 24, if I put that in my calculator, I get 23. And now we're back to a regular old two-step equation. Divide by 23. Oof, duh. Okay. We made it. We got there. Now, does it mean sometime if I get a fraction or something that I'm wrong? Maybe. I try to put some answers down at the bottom where you can check them up front or online, but most of the time we're going to get whole numbers with the ones we do. But similar to yesterday, we're not done quite yet. Now I'm going to take this. And I'm going to plug it into the y equals equation. So here's my step three. y equals 4. I know what x is now. x is 2. So I'm just going to substitute that in. We're doing substitution again, except this time we're not doing it with a whole bunch of stuff. We're just doing it with our answer that we got here. And I can put that in the calculator. I can use my noggin. And once I have y solved for, and that took a lot less time than finding x, we're going to write our answer in a coordinate point x first, and then y second. 
and get to our solution. So it's, it's that first into second step where most of our work is going to come into play when we're doing this. But that about covers us on those. So a majority of what we do will look like that one. We'll see a couple more here momentarily. Yes, the special cases can show back up again. They're not necessarily going to go away. So if I tackle this problem the same way, though, I find my y equals. I'm going to plug it in. So I'm like, all right, step one. Whoops, I started copying the wrong one. Negative 4x plus, here's my y. And so you're like, well, okay, so Hardy, there's nothing for me to distribute to the 4x and the 1. Like up here, we had to distribute that 6 through. What if there's nothing to distribute? I can just start combining things at this point. So I'm actually going to rewrite it just so I don't confuse myself here. But here's where the special case comes into play. I go to put my like terms together. Negative 4 and positive 4 cancel. That's kind of funky. And this should look familiar if we were seeing how things were working yesterday. All the x's are gone. I have 1 equals 1 left, which is true. So if this would have been yesterday and I was graphing, I'd be graphing the same line. Okay, if this were yesterday and we were setting them equal, we'd see the same equation and all the stuff would cancel out. Same idea, just a slightly different look. And so most of you probably know what's coming on the next one now. You're like, well, we had infinite, we had one answer. Oh, this is going to be no solution somehow. It is. It's true. So I find that y equals. I box that in, and I'm going to put that in where the y goes. So we got negative x, I like to just put a 1 in front, plus y. So we're straight just substituting through there as we're working. So I come back and I'm like, nothing to distribute again. So I just rewrite it without the parentheses, so I'm not getting confused as to what I'm doing. Negative 1 and positive 1 cancel. But unlike the last one, those don't equal. 2 does not equal 5, at least not in any math I've ever seen. And since it's false, and there's no x's left, there's no solution. Those are the three options we have every single time we do one of these. One answer, all the answers, none of the answers. And so momentarily here as we get into the practice, again, there's going to be a couple of twists that come up that I want to walk through with you on. But basically, you've got all the things in front of you. So we'll refer back to this as we're doing some of those problems. And as I said, if there's ever a piece you miss, if we get to the end of the lesson and we're doing stuff, you want to borrow my notes and write some stuff down, you can. If once I post them on Classroom, you can get them from there too. So we're always going to have options for you as far as those things go. Now for the moment, I'm going to move this out of the way though. We are going to head over here to page five in the practice packet. I'll make sure I put practice up here. Page five in the practice packet. 
And so now we're looking and you're like, oh, so he's going to play the game like he did yesterday. We're going to do it with the algebra and we're going to do it with the graphing. And there's going to be a little bit of twist to this, though. So this is why I'm going to make sure that we chat through a few of these to make sure I'm just peeking at one thing on the other side. Okay. To make sure we're feeling comfortable. And I'm going to pause it at a time or two here, maybe, to let us kind of practice and see what we're doing and make sure we're going all right before we go too far. Okay. Number one. We're going to take this. We're going to plug it in right there for Y, just like we've been doing. Nothing different. So step one, I'm going to start copying that second equation until I get to the Y. And when I get to the Y, I'm basically going to replace it with what I have in the box. And as I have said many a time, if you would like colors so you can see the differences and things easier, got plenty of them in the back. Once we've got that plugged in, this time I actually have a number I get to distribute. So we're not distributing the 4, we're not combining the 4 with the 3. So I look and I'm like, well, 3 and negative 2, okay, that's not going to be plus, Hardy. Not going to be plus. That's going to be negative 6. 3 times 4 is 12. Remember, this first step is the tedious one. Once we're through here, it's smooth sailing. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. And I already know what some of you are thinking. Some of you are out there thinking, I already, when I, when I minus the 12, that's going to be zero. Is this going to turn into no solution? It is not. And here's why. We still have X left. X has not disappeared. X has got to disappear for us to do no solution or infinite solutions. As long as we have x, we are going to get an answer still. So when I divide by negative 2, okay, nothing divided by something is still nothing. 0 is a legitimate answer. And so I get that first part done, and now comes the easy part. I'm going to take this y equals equation and I'm going to start writing it until I get to the x. But now I have an x value. It's 0. I can plug that into my calculator. This one I think I can use my brain. Negative 2 times 0 is 0 plus 4 is 4. and then just turn it into a coordinate point. So, again, a bit tedious, but nothing terrible. And so as I look at the graphing then, I'm like, okay. Again, we got the calculator if we want it. But otherwise... There's my y-intercept on the y-axis. My slope is the number in front of x. I like it to be a fraction. Down 2 and right 1, down 2 and right 1. Here comes our twist. That's not ready to be graphed yet. Y isn't by itself. 
I know I keep peeking back there too as the door locked and somebody's trying to get in on us. So my first goal here on the second one, I need to get my Y term by itself. So we're going to undo that positive 4x. When I get over here, a couple things to note before I write the next step. This has x and this doesn't. I can't subtract those and call it 8x. It will not work. I also, for graphing, want my x part to be first after the equals to keep my life simple. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to put the x term first, and then we're going to divide everything by 3. If it's something that's a fraction that doesn't come out nice, like how do I know that? I'm just going to negative 4 divided by 3. I don't want the decimal, so I'm just going to leave it as a fraction. But if something divides in nice, I have no problem doing that. And now I'm ready to graph. Because there's my, oh, there's my y-intercept. There's my point. And then I'm going to go down 4 and write 3. And there is my 0. One, two, three, four. So I graphically just did the same thing that I did here algebraically. That's what we're attempting to do as we do these. Now, the one other one immediately I want to do, because like I said, I want to give us some time where I can kind of float around and help people. You can work with each other, do some things like that, is over on the next page because I want you to kind of be able to see how everything works here. So as we flip over, I'm going to make a deal with you like we did yesterday. So I did one there. I want to do an even over here. Let's do, let's do six. I'm going to move down a little bit here. Because I want you to either do evens or odds at least, which means you're doing at least a couple more. So let's do six together. Make sure I'm not missing things. Okay, I'm not. So get my y equals. Plug it in there. So step one. Copy that equation where I did not do the box. So I, all I do is, again, I'm taking out the y and replacing it with what I've got in the box here, because that's what y equals now. A little distributing. Again, I like to put a 1 with my x if there's not a number there, just so I don't forget it. And then we're multiplying the 2 times each of these. So that takes care of our parentheses and gives us the opportunity again, since the x's are all together on the same side, to combine those. And now the Algebra 1 game begins. Now my only goal is to work on getting x alone. by 3, get that value. Again, that was the hard part. We survived. I think the hard part here is just getting here to here. I think the rest of it, I have lots of good equation solvers out there. Step 3, we're going to start writing this, but when we get to x, we know what x is now. It's not a mystery anymore. 2 times 4 is 8. 
minus three is five. I've got my point. I can check my answer down here in the bottom. I'm good to go. And all I've got to do again, like we did before, we're graphing just so we always have that second option. I start at my intercept on the y-axis, up two and right one, right one. Not Hardy's best line ever, but it's gonna work. Again, for the other one, since it's not in y equals yet, Opposite of a negative or a minus 1x would be the plus 1. And just like we had on the other one we did. This has x, this doesn't. Don't combine them. It's not 7x. Not 7x. Put my x's first. And since the goal is to get y alone, how do we undo multiply? We divide. We're almost there. If we're not sure, one divided by two is not two. I see a decimal, I'm gonna leave it as one half. Six divided by two is three. So again, my slope, I'm going up one right two. There is my magic value. And where is it at? Well, let's see. If I follow it back down to the x-axis, four. If I follow it over to the y-axis, five. Same thing. Bingo. And we're ready to roll. So again, minimum, minimum of odds or evens, which means you have two more problems minimum to go here. But try them out, the more you do, the better you're going to be. But check answers as you go. They all are posted now. I had someone mention to me yesterday, Hardy, you didn't even post yesterday's answers. I'm like, well, they're all posted now, so I'm, I'm ahead of the game now. So.